Can I have attention, please? This is a call to order. It's a joint meeting of the Point Santa Community Development District and the Point Santa West Community Development District. It's September 20th, 2017, 1 o'clock, we're in the full room on Village Drive in Solovita. First item on the agenda is a roll call. The Point Santa CDD, Bob Zamari is present. David Wayne present. Lee Ted Epstein present. Dick Keller present. We have a quorum. What's the NSCPD? Glenn Bento present. Bill Brown present. Shirley Mustafa present. We have a quorum. Next item on the agenda, Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Eckert answers as he should, 
that you should wait until the court determines the validity of the club membership fee. You should follow that advice. If you proceed with a multi-million dollar purchase without first securing a public written opinion of counsel upon which you and we the residents can rely, you would be in breach of your fiduciary duty to us, the residents, your constituents. The other point I want to address is your advisors. It is clear from trial testimony that A.B. Holmes, Gary Moyer, and MBS Capital engineered your choice of other consultants so that you were only offered choices that supported A.B. Holmes' views. You are owed a fiduciary duty by the district manager, district counsel, evaluation consultant, and assessment consultant. Yet it was apparent at trial that all, except possibly Scott Harper, were parroting the seller's view of this transaction. And recall that Mr. Harder only computed your maximum borrowing capacity. He did not compute what a third party would pay for either the income stream or the underlying property. You are the buyers here. You are entitled to consultants who support the buyer's view. Gary Moyer has now retired. MBS Capital is the fox in the hen house. Put out an RFP for an underwriter who is loyal to you, not to A.B. Holmes. We who have challenged the specifics of this transaction have always supported resident ownership and control of the amenities. But do it right. You have the time. Both you and district counsel have said that you have the time. Take advantage of the opportunity you now have. Take the time to do it right. Please consider the two things I have asked of you. Get a written public opinion upon which you can rely as to the legality of the club plan and the club membership fee. And retain a bond underwriter who is loyal to you, the buyers, and to us. Thank you for your consideration. Sorry, I didn't get your last name. Nelson. Nelson. Oops. Um, I'm just here to remind you I'm not an attorney like Mark. Thank you. But I just would love you to do what you need to do to represent the people that you are supposed to represent. And not just take anyone's word or be forced into any kind of an agreement that isn't on our behalf. And that's basically it. Oh, one more thing. Um, I just heard that the reason why people in um, Rainbow Lakes pay less than anybody else is because they didn't have to go into another bond issue. Could you have your professionals explain that sometime during the course of this meeting? I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Tony Ariel with uh, AV Home. Uh, first of all, I, I wanted to clarify some points that were just brought out right now, so I'm compelled to, to, to speak before anyone else has any opportunity to. But, uh, you know, naturally, uh, we feel that all the benefits that the residents would have enjoyed if these lawsuits were not filed would have been completed or very close to completion by now. But first of all, um, we are aware and disappointed that the bonds were invalidated based upon a technicality. However, we look forward to working with the board to complete this transaction. We believe the judge provided a clear path forward for validating the bonds. The court specifically concluded that the CDD has a legal authority under Florida law to issue the bonds and levy special assessments. That the CDD demonstrated a valid public purpose for the bond issue. That there is no harm in the fact that a private developer is the primary beneficiary of selling existing amenities for the stated purchase price. That AB Homes did not improperly control, influence, of, or of coerce the, the CDD boards or other parties despite the cries we heard from, from the, those that are filing the lawsuit. That the CDD compiled with all legal requirements to issue the bonds and levy special assessments. That the court must defer to the presumed validity of the CDD chosen income-based evaluation methodology. 
Now, regarding you know the class action suit, I just want to speak a little bit on that because again, that was brought up. Uh, and, and regarding the class action litigation, we continue to believe that the claims raised in this matter are without merit, and that AD Homes plan to vigorously defend itself against any suggestion by anyone that the club is an HOA or that AD Homes is required to turn over their club assets in the future to the homeowners association are highly misleading and inaccurate. These contentions have been substantially ruled upon by any, have not been substantially ruled upon by any court and we contend that they are directly inconsistent with Florida law. So I just wanted to make that statement and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Are there any other comments? I mean none. Move on to the next item on the agenda. That's the approval of the minutes of the order 16 joint board meeting. The point on CDD, all members have received a copy. <laughs> I'll be a little bit delayed, but uh, are there any additions, corrections, or corrections? We might have to wait until the next meeting since most, most of us haven't seen these minutes until a few minutes ago. Okay. Uh, see? I saw them online. Yeah. We got them in email, yes, and I reviewed them. I agree. I agree. Okay, then we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. And that's discussion of bond validation order and next steps. Sure, thank you. Um, I'm glad to take the lead on that. Thank you. Um, as uh, the board is aware and is in the agenda package, we did get a judgment back from the court on the bond validation case. Uh, I just want to uh, go through uh, the issues that the court discussed and what the court found and then talk about what the, the district's options are uh, moving forward. Um, before I get into that though, I do want to uh, respond to one of the attorneys for the residents' uh, comments that were made in, uh, in the, the public comment. Um, we will have, these boards will have something in writing in terms of an opinion on the club plan because a judge will make that decision in the class action whether or not the club plan is legal. And as I have told the board many times, that the class action pending will prevent us from selling bonds. So that will have to be resolved. A court will have to issue an order stating whether or not the club plan is legal before we will ever be able to market and sell bonds. So it's kind of a red herring. It's not really a real issue. That's so those two issues will be What's that? Those two issues of moving on the club plan and, uh, and moving forward with the sale uh, or, or related. Yes, the club plan ruling will have to come before we could ever sell on. So, uh, for anybody to suggest that this board is going to go out and, and sell uh, a whole lot of bonds before that class action is resolved, I mean, that's silly. So, what, what is the time period that we're looking at to wait for that ruling? It could be um, three months to six, seven years. That, that, that's as a result of the class action lawsuit. Class actions aren't quick. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> I hope I hope everybody got that. Yeah. It, it, anyway, it's it's uh, up in the air, but we will not be selling bonds until you have an opinion of a judge saying whether or not the club plan is legal. If the judge comes back and says the club plan is illegal, of course we're not going to be selling bonds. So uh, at least certainly not uh, not in the same manner that we've been envisioning so far. So that's not really an issue. Um, the second issue is uh, that the one area was not part of a bond issue and that's why they were paying less. That, that's also not accurate. So I, I'm not sure how to answer the question because I don't even understand the premise of the question. But it's not, there isn't, there isn't land that was left out of a bond issue. That was never the, the, the case. So 
So the the, the rainbow wigs? Yeah, the rainbow wigs. That's question. Yeah, that's, I didn't even understand. I don't, I don't understand it either, but it's, it's not an issue because there was no property that was like left out of the bond issue. Um, so getting back to what the court found, uh, there are three questions in bond validation for bonds that are related to the bonds, not the special assessments, the bonds that the court considered. All three of those issues were decided in this district's favor. And in fact, we could have filed a validation and not included special assessments, but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to include special assessments so that we can foreclose somebody come back and challenging them later. So that's why we included them in there. So you have three questions related to the bonds. The first question is, the court found the districts have the legal authority to issue bonds and levy special assessments to secure the bonds, okay? That was established by the court in the district's favor. Second, the court found that the districts demonstrated a valid public purpose for bond issuance. Um, it was argued that the purpose was a private purpose. The court rejected that and said, no, it is a valid public purpose. So we prevailed on that. The court expressly rejected the notion that the developer improperly controlled, unduly influenced, or coerced the boards or their consultants. So a lot of the time that we spent dealing with that issue, the courts agreed with the districts on that count. Third, the court found that the districts comply with all legal requirements to issue the bonds and levy the special assessments. Uh, the court rejected the defendant's uh, interpretation of fair value. In addition, uh, the court rejected the argument that club membership fees couldn't be included in, in the valuation uh, and found that the districts could use an income-based approach to value and that that was not arbitrary and capricious. So had we not tried to validate a special assessments too, we would have prevailed in the bond validation because we wouldn't have had the special assessment issues. However, that's not in your interest because I don't want to be looking over my shoulder for four years, nor do you. You want to have this resolved once and for all by a court. When you get to the issue of special assessments, there are two things that the district had to prove in the case, and we prevailed on one of those two. The first one is that the court found the lands within the districts received special benefit from the purchase of the existing amenities and the construction of the new amenities. So uh, we were successful there. The, the thing that the court had a concern with, which is an issue that we've discussed many times, was the concept of the, everybody's desire to make sure people weren't paying more than what they were paying now. And then dealing with the fact that club membership fees are different for some people now. And the way that we attempted to deal with that issue in the methodology was to take that into account in the beginning. And, uh, and the court had a concern with that because the court felt that when you actually made the assessment levy, it should be the same across the board and adjustments you know, can come later as people pay down, their, uh, pay down their assessments. And so that issue, that assessment equalization payment, which we talked about that was built into your methodology and built into your purchase contract, um, was something the board was not comfortable with. I will tell you right now, I'm still comfortable with it. However, the court has a concern with it, and then it's up to the board to decide what you want to do, if anything, moving forward, because there is a way to resolve that. If you recall, it was about a $4 million payment that was gonna be a deduction from the purchase price. Um, you can eliminate that concept altogether, and we'll talk about that a little bit here in, in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So that was the only issue that the court had with this bond validation case. The rest of the issues uh, were resolved in the district's favor. So at this point in time, um, if anybody has any questions about the judgment from the board, I'd be glad to address them. Uh, but if not, I'd like to move on to what the board's options are uh, moving forward. Do we have any questions regarding? No. Um, you have essentially three options that, that I can recommend to you uh, that you consider. I'm not making a recommendation on which one you do because I think they're all business decisions for the board. Uh, number one is you can terminate the transaction for failure to achieve a bond obligation. You can do that. Um, you can also appeal the judge's ruling uh, in terms of uh, the issue that they found against the district on. Uh, my recommendation is, is not to pursue that avenue, uh, simply because I think option number three, if you're not going to terminate the transaction, 
uh, it would be uh, advisable for you to consider simplifying your assessment methodology, take out the concept of uh, you know, paying down assessments from the district's documents, from our purchase contract, from our methodology, and, and just not get into that business in terms of trying to deal with that through, through your own documents. Um, and so those are the three options that I see that you have today. Uh, and so with that, I would uh, open it up for board discussion in terms of questions that you may have for me or just discussion between the board members on how you'd like to proceed. So they are terminate the transaction, uh, appeal, or simplify your assessment methodology and redo your assessments and your bond validation. Um, all of those are, are options that you have. It's a business decision for you how you want to proceed. And you may have other options that I haven't thought of. And so feel free to throw those out there if you do. Well, I, I guess in, from a personal standpoint, my own personal view that it's terminating a transaction, I don't think you want to do that. Uh, appealing your recommendation is not to appeal. I would abide by that. So that leaves us with the third one, and that's try to rework, re rework the um, the assessment methodology and see if we can come up with some idea of what works. That's my own personal opinion. I concur. I agree with that as well. Thank you. Uh, this is Big Keller. I, I really think that I agree that we should not appeal. I do feel that we need to have a discussion on the termination of the agreement. And let me just explain my thought process. I think that since November of 2015, this has been being discussed by residents. It has caused a breach of the friendly neighborhood of Solovia to the point where there is a lot of animosity shown the vision of the community, and I'm not saying that everybody is right or everybody's wrong and everybody's entitled to their own opinion. However, in listening to and watching the reaction of residents to this transaction, it has caused a breach which I never anticipated seeing in Solar Peter. And believe me, I, I'm not going to be around for it. But I'm not going to be around for when the HOA is turned over to the residents because I really, really would not relish that. But it is causing the same thing here. I don't think this community is ready to purchase these amenities. I'm speaking from my heart. I'm from I won't be able to see the conclusion probably. But I think that for the community in general, the best thing to do may be to step back and reconsider everything. I think that it is, I know that a lot of money has been spent. I know that a lot of energy for residents on both sides of the issue has been spent. I know that many of you that are against the uh, the the, the uh, term or the contract, the agreement, are my friends, and it has caused a uh, a real disappointment in me. Been a resident here for almost twelve years been very active in the community, been on this board for over seven years. And I just think that you may not agree with me, guys, and ladies, but I think that the discussion is warranted on whether or not we should turn it. Let's see. Well, I think there's a fourth option. I think making a decision, those of us that are here on the board today, without including the residents in this decision is a big mistake. I think it would be wise to have a professional survey of the residents to see whether there is support to go forward, to have several options for going forward, 
such as contract as is by fixing the assessment and fixing the assessments, renegotiation of the price and fix the assessments, or not do the deal at all. And I think residents have a right to have a voice in this decision. I don't think we have a right as supervisors to make this decision without getting a good feeling from the community about which direction the community wants to go. by the decision of the residents that once they do say, I feel they're going to say go forward. I do feel there is a silent majority up there. So if we can go forward with that, that's great. Uh, Dick, I respectfully disagree with you, but I can understand your concern. And I too have seen the animosity from certain people. But most people I meet outside are very much for the deal. Uh, for those of you that I, I walk in the morning if I don't get picked for or if I'm not going to a doctor. So uh, I, stop and have, I stop and have coffee every morning and I look and I feel I should be watching a block go up for the theater. And I think, you know, there's a, I don't like to question anybody's motives, but I tend to feel, this is my opinion, that the people against it have done a disservice to this community. That's my opinion. I'm not questioning their motives. I think they've done a disservice. I think we, this should have been, Lita has often said there's been no delay. No delay. This is ridiculous we've been going for this. We've been pulling this load. So I think, I think the best thing would happen if the class action suit was one in favor of the defendants. That would be great. I'd love to think we're not paying any money. But I think this deal is better than no deal. So I think most of the community is, is for it. So let's do a survey. And then let's live by what they say to you. I have never said I would not live by the survey. I made it very clear that I think that is the way the decision should be made with resident involvement. There's no reason to make such snide remarks. Well, you have started this snowball going and it's out of control. Yeah, that's not right. Uh, can I come in? <laughs> let's go ahead and, and step back. I mean, I think that you have the three options before the board. Um, and, and certainly uh, Supervisor Kellogg has, has, wants to have a, a further discussion on the termination and the, and the merits of that. And then we have the other option. Let, let me ask this question, because this is the one thing that I have to get resolved today. And that is, is there anybody on the board that wants to appeal this decision? Because we will have to make that decision before we meet the next time. No. I'm seeing everybody shaking their heads. No. Uh, yeah, we can take a vote now that uh, that you uh, direct staff not to file uh, an initial appeal of uh, the judge's rule. Okay, for the point stand, CDD. All those in favor of not filing an appeal? And it would be, I want to be very clear, an initial appeal. And it, if, in fact, someone else files an appeal, uh, we may change our mind. Okay, so how do I rephrase that? All in favor of not filing an initial appeal. All in favor of not filing an initial appeal, but we will have another meeting if in fact that there is a reason for us to uh, file an appeal other than uh, one initially set forth by us. Okay, we'll see how that winds up being uh, recorded. Independence. All right. We need a motion. All in favor? Uh, we need a motion. I thought I just did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Carol. So moved. Thank you. I move to not file an initial appeal. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I've got a few things to say as well. Mm -hmm. I've been on this board now nine years. I'm the senior member of this board. Uh, let me tell you this. I definitely do not want to terminate this at all. I think the residents need to own the, red, the amenities, and I think most people are in favor of that. I think we also need the new amenities to help us out with the new people <coughs> coming on board. However, 
I do think we need to reevaluate and possibly renegotiate the deal, possibly either lowering the price or certainly getting everybody's residence like we leader, that we definitely have to get everybody's opinion, okay, both pro and con, and go with the majority. So I'm going to get them involved. So with that, uh, I'll yes. Well, there's only one, one thing that I want to add to that, and that's uh, there, there's another party involved in this, and that's A.B. Holmes. Uh, Correct. We can get to Dick's point about terminating the, the, the deal. But that's fine, but, you know, we don't want A.B. Holmes to go out and sell it out from under us either. So how can, how can we structure something so that they don't go ahead and do that? You can say all you want, no, they're not going to do that. I don't believe they're going to do that. You don't know. That's a business decision on their part. Well, so, I have a question on that business decision. Isn't that also blocked by the class action because the income stream may not be a legal income stream, so would a third party even be interested in taking a risk prior to that decision? Uh, can I make a comment? Wait, wait, wait. That's, That's a question. question. I'm sorry. That's a question. That's a question to your assistant. Who can answer that? Well, can, well, can a third party buy it even though there's a class action suit pending? Is that the question? What, what a third party consider it with that kind of question? How do you know? I, I, I can't answer that. I mean, uh, well, they're gonna, you know, who, who knows what they would use in terms of that transaction? Right. Also, 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 another point that I want to make is on the third point, which was the methodology simplification. I definitely agree with that as well. You know, we have all these different numbers of everybody paying a different amount on these club fees. Now, if that's legal, then I would like to see it up equally across the board, lowering them down a bit, but everybody paying the same amount because everybody gets the same benefit. Can, can I ask the group to hold on a minute? Sure. I mean, all that's different from our last meeting was this one thing about the equalization. In our last meeting, we were all ready to go with the bond validation. Had that all been approved, we wouldn't be sitting here all of a sudden looking at terminating something we've worked a year on or more. The, the issue, I think, is if we've been working for this transaction, why are we all of a sudden backing away because of the one equalization method? What changed everybody's mind? Did, some, did we have this sand person come when we were sleeping and all of a sudden say, don't do that anymore? It was, what? My, it was my comment. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying, saying that everybody wants to terminate it. All I'm saying is, is that I feel we need a discussion on possibly terminating the agreement because of the way this process has been working itself out. Well, if, if we look at ourselves as the representatives of this community, of the homeowners of this community, which when we were just dealing with stormwater drain, nobody gave a damn what we represented or not. And now all of a sudden, we're dealing with something very important without any question. We've been dealing with for, I think, a year and a half, not a year. And the discussions that are happening, whether they're here in a controlled environment or whether they're out in our social thing, is not gonna ever go away. If we wait another year and then start discussing this, we're still going to have the people who disagree with the price we pay, whether it's 73 million or 60 million or 50 million. We're never going to get this whole community to agree on it because some people think we should just be given it for nothing. And that's never going to change. So to us to back off at this point in time with only one small little piece changing, I think we're we're almost, in my opinion, negating everything we've done and everything we've believed in. We've believed in this process from day one. Why all of a sudden are we thinking about forgetting about it because the equalization thing didn't get approved? They didn't not approve our whole idea. They did not approve our whole transaction. In fact, they pretty much agreed with us except for the one thing. Okay, so I think okay, we... Right? then why don't we, as two boards, do what we did with the, with the appeal? And say, okay, I had a discussion, what a discussion about termination, vote on yes or no. Okay. If we don't want to terminate, then let's vote, and we move forward, and the last thing is the assessment. 